away from where it would be under the null position okay and more importantly it's in the negative region yeah so the question now that we have is what is this critical value here but we're putting all of the area we're going to put five percent of the area into this particular tail here which is 0 0.05 of our area so to find the critical values we're going to go to our t tables okay so we're going to look at our t distribution distribution tables okay uh, our t distribution tables are parameterized by the probability okay the amount of area that we're putting in our tail okay uh, and also by the degrees of freedom so what our t distribution is parameterized by is the probability the amount of area in our tail okay and also what's known as the degrees of freedom so our degrees of freedom now our degrees of freedom for a test for a t test is the sample size minus one so it's their degrees of freedom is equal to n minus one in this case it's going to be eight eight minus one gives us a degrees of freedom of seven okay now the tables that we're going to use, okay, okay, the tables that we're going to use are t tables that we've set up and we've constructed and generated, okay, uh, generated using, I suppose, generating using, where am I gone here, sorry, uh, we've generated these tables uh, using Excel, okay, and the question now is how much area, okay, uh, these tables are set up to, to specify how much area there is in the right hand tail, okay. Uh, so the area in the right hand tail okay actually unfortunately the way we've set these up here is that we have a situation here where we've actually just talked about areas in the right hand tails but don't forget this distribution is symmetrical okay so if there's five percent of the area in this tail there must be five percent of the area in this tail although i'm not interested in that tail there but this critical value here is going to be the same as this critical value over here they're going to be this is going to be the negative counterpart of that so let's find out what this critical value would be if that area was in the right hand tail okay so in other words if there's five percent of the area in the right hand tail and what we end up with is if we triangulate in okay we end up with a critical value okay so the degrees of freedom okay our degrees of freedom are going to be seven okay and we've got five percent of the area in the right hand tail okay so five percent of the area in the right hand tail gives us a value of 1.895 okay maybe that's hard to see there okay maybe i'll just bring this a bit closer to the camera Okay, so that's uh, it's still a bit fuzzy there. Okay, but it's 1.895. Okay, for seven degrees of freedom. Okay, uh, so what we have is this is 1.895. Okay, so actually this value here, this critical value here, is 1.895. That's what has that's a critical value that has five percent of the area in the right tail. But through symmetry, that means that this critical value over here must be equal to minus 1.895. Okay, so. What we can actually see hopefully is that our test statistic is minus 2.13 so our test statistic okay our t is actually in the right hand tail so it's in the left hand tail so our decision okay five our decision okay, okay is that clearly okay, okay our t statistic falls into our rejection region yeah okay because it's minus 2.13 2.13 is 2.13 units to the left of zero which is more than 1.895 units to the left of zero okay so if i was to say this really what i'm saying here is if i actually throw away the signs okay we're saying decision is clearly that the absolute value of my test statistic okay is bigger than the absolute value of my critical value and what i mean by that is that 2.13 is bigger than 1.895 1.895 okay and as such and as such okay we reject h0 at h0 okay in favor in favor of ha okay at the five percent level of significance okay so we're rejecting this position here so we're rejecting so we're going here okay okay so we're rejecting we're making the inferential step okay so we're rejecting at the five percent level of significance and we infer okay okay we infer that actually the average of the population that there's evidence to suggest that the average of the population of differences between the before and after measure okay is less than zero which means that they're negative okay which means that there's been a reduction so and infer okay that there has been a reduction okay, 
a reduction in crime rates, okay? Crime rates, okay? Uh, across them regions, okay? Uh, the only complicated thing here was this, was that this was a left tail test, okay? I want to show a reduction, okay? My tables didn't give me left hand tail areas, gave me right hand tail areas, but through symmetry, I know that this, this critical value here is the same as the positive one, but negated, yeah, okay? So let's keep that in mind. But there you go, that's the test. So actually what we've really said here is that there's evidence to suggest that this actual, this actual intervention the intervention between the before and the after measure has actually had an effect and actually has has actually worked okay and we're 95% confident about that because we set our significance level at the 5% significance at the 5% significance uh, threshold okay guys uh, once again uh, this was Jonathan Lambert uh, with the Mathematics Developments uh, and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this video, another video in our series dealing with hypothesis testing, and more importantly concentrating on the dependent samples t-test, or what's known as a paired samples t-test. Yeah. Uh, I, I hope that this video was in some way uh, uh, intuitive, and more importantly, I hope that was actually helpful for you, and thank you for watching. Okay, bye-bye.